In lesson 1, we're going to learn about Windows 8. We'll learn what Windows is, the history of the different versions of Windows, the different editions of Windows 8, the extra features found in Windows 8 Professional, and the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit Windows. Let's begin by defining what Windows is. Today's version of Windows, Windows 8, is considered an operating system. An operating system is basically a piece of software that lets you, the user, talk to the hardware. Your operating system is essentially your main interface to the computer. It allows you to run other programs, perform tasks, and so on. Every other piece of software that you're going to use, from your word processor to your spreadsheet to your internet browser, all rely on your operating system to talk to the computer hardware. Now, back in the old days when I was a kid, yeah, back in prehistoric times, you pretty much had to be a nerd to understand how to work with the operating system. The interface was command line only, so you had to know a bunch of cryptic commands in order to get the computer to do anything. This is an old screenshot of MS-DOS 3.3, which stands for Microsoft Disk Operating System, version 3.3, and it literally was just an interface between you and the files on the hard drive. Then a few years later, Microsoft came out with Windows. Now, at first, Windows was just a program that ran on top of DOS. It was just a pretty graphical interface to allow non-nerds to be able to work with a computer. It was very limited by today's standards, but it did the job. In 1995, Microsoft completely revamped Windows and called it Windows 95. It was a complete redesign from earlier versions of Windows. Next was Windows 98, a couple of years later. This was one of my personal favorites. Windows 98 ran really well compared to Windows 95, which had lots of bugs in it. Now, Windows 95 and 98 were still just pretty graphical interfaces for DOS. They still relied on that MS-DOS operating system underneath in order to run. Now, one of the first versions of Windows that was an actual operating system was Windows NT. That stood for New Technology. There was both a server and a workstation version available. Windows NT was pretty much designed for business users. It wasn't really marketed for home use. Business users want extra security and stability, and it was designed as more of a high-end operating system. Then came my personal favorite operating system, Windows 2000. In fact, I still use Windows 2000 on a couple of my office machines today. It's currently 2013, so that just is a testimony to how well-built Windows 2000 was. Again, Windows 2000 was more of a business operating system designed with security and stability in mind. It had both a server and a workstation version. The workstation version was called Windows 2000 Professional. Next came Windows XP with its pretty green start button. Windows XP, of course the XP standing for experience, was marketed toward both business and home users. Microsoft merged a lot of the features of both the older Windows 2000 and the Windows 98 interfaces together and produced a single operating system for both home and business users. Then there was the much hated Windows Vista. Now Microsoft added a lot of cool new features in Windows Vista, but the operating system itself just had lots of problems. If you ran Vista on a brand new machine, it was okay. In fact, I myself had a Vista laptop that ran just fine. But lots and lots of people upgraded older versions of Windows to Vista and had tons of problems. Then there was Windows 7. Now, Windows 7 was considered by most to be the best version of Windows ever. I liked it a lot. In fact, my main work computer is still a Windows 7 machine. It's a great, stable operating system. In fact, if you've still got a Windows 7 machine and you're happy with it, just stick with Windows 7. It's great. Unless you need some of the new features in Windows 8 that we're going to talk about soon, or you want to be able to play with the touchscreen interface, then upgrade to Windows 8. If not, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Windows 7 is a great operating system. And, of course, that brings us to today's class, Windows 8. Microsoft has made a lot of dramatic changes in Windows 8, including the new start screen interface. We'll talk about all these changes shortly. Now, in addition to all the previous versions of Windows, Windows 8 itself has four different additions or flavors. Now, if you've purchased yourself a desktop or laptop PC from your average computer store or online outlet, 
chances are you have Windows 8 standard on your computer. This is the version of Windows we'll be talking about today. It's got all the basic features of Windows on it, pretty much everything that you need for average everyday home use or small business use. Windows 8 Professional costs a little bit more, and it's got extra tools and features generally designed for power users, nerds like me, or business users. And by business users, I mean people who generally need lots of security on their computers. Windows 8 Professional includes things like file encryption, which we'll talk about shortly. Then there's Windows 8 Enterprise, which is designed for really, really big corporations that buy thousands of licenses. We're not going to talk about that at all today. And finally, there's Windows RT. Now, according to Microsoft, officially, RT doesn't stand for anything. But according to all the nerd stuff that I read online, RT stands for runtime. Now, right now, Windows RT is only designed for phones and tablets. Microsoft has a new Surface tablet on the market right now, and it runs Windows RT. The plus side is that Windows RT is fast and snappy, and it's great on a tablet or phone. However, Windows RT does not run standard Windows applications, and we'll talk more about the difference between Windows RT apps and standard desktop applications in a few minutes. But Windows RT was designed to be more like a phone or a tablet interface. You have to use special apps that you download from Microsoft's store, and you can't install all of your old programs from Windows 7 and earlier on your Windows RT device. So if you've got a Microsoft Surface tablet, you can't pull out your old copy of Photoshop and install it on there. You'll have to wait for the Surface Pro, which is coming out soon. That will have a version of Windows on it that can run old Windows applications. So for those of you who are curious and want to make sure you're not missing out on anything that's in Windows 8 Professional, let's talk a few minutes about what some of these features are. First, there's the Remote Desktop Host. Now, Remote Desktop allows you to access your computer from a remote location. You can set it up across a network or even over the Internet. I use it all the time if I'm traveling and I want to get into some files that are on my desktop computer at home. Now, every Windows 8 computer can be the remote machine, so you can use it to access another computer, but only Windows 8 Professional has the Remote Desktop Host available, where it can actually be the computer that is providing access to it. There are other free solutions available. You don't need to use Remote Desktop to do this. I'll talk about that in one of the later lessons. Next is a nerd utility called Hyper-V. This lets you set up something called a virtual machine. Now, a virtual machine is a copy of Windows running inside another copy of Windows. This is handy usually for old applications, mostly games, that don't run well under Windows 8. You might have a game or some older custom application that was written for you that doesn't run well under Windows 8. Maybe it was written for Windows XP or Windows 2000. Well, you can set up a virtual machine, which is a copy of Windows XP running inside Windows 8. Again, that's something pretty much only nerds need. Next, there are two levels of file encryption that come with Windows 8 Professional. There's the encrypting file system, or EFS, and there's BitLocker drive encryption. Now, the former just lets you encrypt single files or folders. So if you have a particular file that's a, a critical business file, a spreadsheet, or some other financial information, and you don't want someone else seeing that, you would just encrypt it with the EFS. BitLocker lets you encrypt your entire hard drive. Now, it slows the machine down a little bit, but it makes sure that everything on the computer is encrypted in case your laptop gets stolen, someone doesn't get access to all your information. Again, generally only business users need this, or nerds like me. Windows 8 will let you join an Active Directory domain. Again, that's something usually set up in businesses with Windows servers. You can still set up a network in your home or your small office using Windows 8 standard. You just can't join a domain on a server unless you have Windows 8 Professional. And finally, there's virtual hard disk booting, which lets you set up a bootable thumb drive or even a separate file on your hard disk that can act as an operating system itself and you can boot into it. Again, just one more feature reserved for the ultra-nerdy. There are a couple of other minor enhancements that Windows 8 Professional brings, but those are the main ones. Now, you may hear that there are two different types of Windows as far as 32-bit versus 64-bit go. 
64-bit Windows is the default. So if you've purchased a laptop or a computer with Windows 8 on it, chances are you've got 64-bit Windows installed. 64-bit Windows allows the computer to use over 4 gigabytes of RAM, of system memory. If you've got the 32-bit version of Windows, you won't be able to use more than 4 gigs of RAM. For the most part, the version you have is completely indistinguishable to the average user. You really can't tell the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit Windows. The reason why 32-bit Windows is even still available is because some older 32-bit applications may not work with 64-bit Windows. They're rare, but they are out there. So if you have a mission-critical application for your business that you absolutely have to have, and it's not compatible with 64-bit Windows, well, then you might have to downgrade to 32-bit. The good news is, both versions cost the same. Now, in order to take full advantage of 64-bit Windows, you also have to have 64-bit applications, like Microsoft Office and such, that take full advantage of that 64-bit memory address. Now again, this is kind of nerdy stuff, so if it's over your head, don't worry about it. We'll talk more about it in our future classes. But I just want to let you know that sometimes if you're buying Windows, if you're buying a new machine and they ask you which version you want, unless you've got some custom software that doesn't work with 64-bit Windows, go ahead and get the 64-bit version.